How are we doing? <laughs> Just kind of break the ice. My name is Andy Anderson. I'm the founder and executive director of Ear Candy Charity. I'm going to tell you what that's all about and how we inspire kids. How we give thousands of kids access to music education. Because really, at the end of the day, kids love music. We all start out musical. We all start with a heartbeat. We all start out being attached to our mothers. Then we gravitate to rhythms in life. I mean, you ever play music for kids? Like, play something in your car? Just flip out. They actually just they want music. Not only that, but so many studies prove that music does so many great things for kids. They're more likely to be successful in school. They're more likely to develop socially. They're more likely to stay on the street. And they're more likely to be contributing members of this society. So, with all these great reasons why music is good for kids, why are we cutting it out? I was shocked when I learned that Arizona right now is 49th out of 50 states in per person educational funding. You know what the first thing to get cut? Arts and music programs. These kids have an avenue to express themselves, and we're cutting that out. 79% of schools spend less than $1 per student per year on arts or music supplies. It's like a Trump at a school. It's crazy. So I'm seeing these stats, and I'm like, all right, I got to do something about it. I don't know what, but I got to do something about it. So here's the inspiration. You got kids. So these kids. They're naturally gravitating to music. They get so much out of it. How do we give them that access? And so that was my charge. You know, how am I going to create something that's going to give every kid this access to music education? How am I going to admit all in this situation? So I got to do a little background to fill you in on who I am and how I became here. So I'm that little kid up in the corner playing piano with my brother. Uh, it was my best friend. He's two years older than me. I remember the first day we ever went to piano lessons. My mom was like, all right, guys, if you don't like it, you never have to come back. We went in, we played our first lesson, we came out, mom, we hate it. We don't want to do it. All right, great, you guys are playing until you're in the eighth grade. So that's how I started my musical career. So I played as a kid, I played for eight years. And I tell you what, I mean, I started seeing the benefits whether I knew it or not. I was better in math. I was more in tune from an academic perspective. You know, I come from a family of entrepreneurs, so it's really tough for me to kind of like deal with rules and you know play play by the rules. But I like cracking the code. So everything to me was a math equation. How do I get out of this situation? How do I make this better? So I started seeing all this benefit, and it really opened my eyes to music and how much I love music. And it wasn't until I went and really saw music live that I saw how much power comes from music, and how much energy can come from that. And so I started just sharing music with everyone that I knew. So like I started sharing all my favorite songs. And this isn't stuff you can find on the radio. In fact, I ripped up my antenna out of my truck three years ago. I don't even listen to the radio. So all the music I was, I keep prescribing to people, they're like, where do you find this stuff? What is this stuff? It's ear candy. I've been using ear candy for like 10 years. I've been making mixes, Nate's Tasty Traps, Musical Morsels, Nader Tops, which you can see up there is one of the servings. You know? So I took this passion of really wanting to share music. And really, that's what it started with. Coupled with, I went to school to be an entrepreneur. I come from a family of entrepreneurs. How do I combine this into something great? And so I started this organization called Ear Candy, which we provide youth access to music education. It didn't start that way. Actually, it started originally of putting on concerts, sharing that energy of music, and wanting to use those concerts to raise funds for timely causes. So things that I cared about. So I did a couple of events, and that's when I found those startling stats that all these programs are getting cut. All these music programs, all these kids aren't getting access to music. And I'm like, Who's doing anything about this? You gotta be kidding me. And I look around and no one's doing anything to the degree that I think is really needs to be done. Started this organization four years ago, and this year will impact over 15,000 kids in the Phoenix area through a couple key ways, which I'm gonna kind of walk you through here. So this 
wave of ear candy guitar picks all over the valley. I started with instrument drives. The simple concept of you've got something collecting dust in your closet that that kid over there needs. That was it. Started with a bunch of businesses, found out logistics are horrible trying to pick up when you're the only person with 41 donation sites. Driving all over the place. Oh, you need more brochures? I'll drive them down. Oh, you got a flute in Chandler? I just live in North Phoenix. You do that for 40 different sites, your head spins around. So what we did is we teamed up with the fire stations. Right now, we got 80 donation sites. We got 80 fire stations. Phoenix, Avenue, Glendale, Scottsdale, Tempe. So all these sites are collecting instruments. So really, we got, we got you as a donor. You take your instrument to a fire station. And then it comes to ear candy, and eventually we finally get to this X. We finally get to deliver it to the kid. And so, you know, it's pretty archaic. It's this process, but it works. Like I said, 15,000 kids this year just collecting instruments at fire stations and finding homes for them. And not just homes, the right homes for them. These are going to impact programs that are already in existence. They're serving low-income youth, and the only thing preventing these kids from participating in a music program are the instruments we're providing. So, literally, the only barrier for these kids to have this fantastic experience of learning music is these instruments that people are donating out of their closets. And 99% of the instruments we get donated are coming out of closets. They're collecting dust, and every single one of them has a story. But as you can see, there's a lot of steps there. I mean, really, at the end of the day, I just want to get this to here. You know, you got the donor. I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but I'm just going to do it. All right, so, so we got this donor today, and they ultimately just want to get to the X. So that's what we're doing next. This was my Tuesday morning, delivering instruments. Now, what's great about this, we were able to invite some of the donors that these were their instruments and connect them with that process. So starting in a few months, in January, we're going to start doing that on a large scale basis. We're getting out of the middle. Ed is out of here. <laughs> T and X is all that's going to remain is that same situation. You've got a Trump you want to donate? Well, why can't I let you look at all the different places that need a Trump? In? So you're going to be able to look online, you're going to be able to look at all the different programs throughout the entire valley and be able to say, wow, I, I read about this program, I saw the pictures of these kids, oh, they're doing some amazing things over here, all right, that's where I want to place my trumpet. We're going to give you that option to just get really connected instead of currently go to a fire station and it hopefully getting into our hands. Because as you can imagine, firefighters are kind of busy. Um, fighting fires, not collecting instruments all the time. So by getting out of the middle, we're going to allow this process, we're going to allow the donor to have a greater experience of actually getting directly involved with that school. We're going to allow you to actually choose where you want your donation to go and feel empowered by it. And on top of that, this forum that we're going to be having all online is going to allow you to share your story. Because I can't even tell you the amazing stories that we've had of the instruments that have been donated. I mean, one of the, one of the instruments we got a couple years ago was a trombone from 1913. It, they included this whole huge letter. It led this band. It led that band. It was on this TV show. It was the, the lead in this university band. And it was just too incredible to, sorry, put in the hands of an eight-year-old kid that's just learning trombone. So we ended up putting it in the MIM. So it's up in the musical instrument. Museum. So check out their polka section. <laughs> trombone from ear candy. So, but these instruments, all of them have a story. You know, whether it's I played it for a week and I put it in my closet, or my son played this for 10 years through school. You know, he's since moved on, but that's a valuable story. You know, this isn't donating a sweater. This is donating something very valuable. We really want to make sure that that donor feels valued in that transaction. So what's great about this entire process is that all this stuff is collecting dust in people's closets. Everyone's got some sort of instrument. You've all tried an instrument at some point in time in your life. You know, and whether you have one or not, more than likely your neighbor does. And what's crazy is that half the solution to music education is just collecting dust in people's closets. 
So we're providing a very efficient way for you to actually be able to impact kids literally down the street that have a need for something you have, but you never knew that need existed. So we're providing that clear avenue for those kids to actually get that benefit. So, you know, as you can imagine, with 15,000 kids, you know, there's a lot of logistics that go into that. We track every single instrument. So even right now, with our archaic system, we're still going to let you know where your instrument goes. But now we're going to be able to give you that, that access to be able to pick where it's going to go. And the great thing about this whole thing is right now we're very logistically constrained. You know, there's only so much we can do with a staff of three people and a young nonprofit with 80 donation centers. Well, when you take Ed out of the middle, like, it frees us up. It allows us to then go replicate this in so many other areas because we don't physically have to be in any city collecting instruments anymore. There's no reason why we can't create a marketplace in Tucson, Flagstaff, Chicago, Seattle, where donors are donating their instruments because they're picking the programs that are down the street from them that they never knew needed an instrument. So what's great is that the long-term aspect of this is that we can go share this, share this with everyone else out there because I know we're 49th out of 50th in per-person educational funding, but there is another state out there with 50. <laughs> Not only that, but there's a whole bunch of other kids out there that need this access to music education. So, long story long, like our real goal with this is to really admit all. We want every kid to have access to music education. You know, every kid deserves that opportunity to see if they really want to play music. The goal with this isn't to find the next Jimi Hendrix or Taylor Swift. Granted, we might, but that's not the goal. The goal is to create culturally enlightened members of society, giving them an opportunity to be enlightened empowered and enriched by music education. So we provide that access, we give that to them. And what's crazy about this is that this entire concept came from me just noodling around. I'm not a musician, I'm not a parent, except for a huge bull massive dog who's incredible. <laughs> and I'm not, I, I'm actually not uh, a nonprofit like specialist. I had no experience when I started this thing. But by pure passion, and by really knowing to put my heart into something, been able to create this so that at the end of the day, T can eat X and tens of thousands of kids and eventually hundreds of thousands of kids will get the access to music education they deserve. And we can finally admit all. Thank you so much.